Hello everyone, this side Dr. Abhijit and today we are going to discuss about male infertility. Now, in male infertility, I will be focusing on the abnormal semen analysis, the terms that we use for abnormal semen analysis. Apart from that, I will be talking about the criteria and the semen analysis parameter like the semen volume, total sperm number, total mortality, okay, vitality, everything. Apart from that, I will be discussing about the pre-testicular, testicular and post-testicular azospermia. And later on, I will be discussing about the Klinefelter syndrome. So let's start. Firstly, the terms in or the terminology for abnormal semen analysis. Abnormal semen analysis. Now, we already know that the semen, it is the fluid, right, that is secreted or it is contributed by the seminal vesicles, the prostate gland and the bulbourethral glands at the time of intercourse. Bulbourethral glands will pour its secretion only at the time of intercourse. Otherwise, we have the semen, seminal vesicles and the prostate gland. So, yes, we will talk about the terminology for the abnormal semen analysis. The first one, it is the oligospermia. Now, as per the new criteria, if the sperm concentration, it is less than 16 million per ml, it is less than 16 million per ml, then it is termed as oligospermia. Earlier, it was less than 15 uh, million per ml, but as of the new criteria, it says it is less than 16 million per ml. Apart from that, remember severe oligospermia, it is the sperm concentration, the sperm concentration less than 5 million per ml. If the sperm concentration it is less than 5 million per ml, we term it as severe oligospermia. Aspermia. Aspermia means A. Anything uh, A laga hota hai, it is termed as absent, right? So it is aspermia means absent semen. Absent semen. Now, if we talk about azospermia, it is no sperm in the semen. Okay, it is no sperm in the semen. Teratospermia, it is the abnormal uh, sperm morphology. Right, uh, repeat. Teratospermia, it is abnormal sperm morphology. The morphology of the sperm, it is defective. It is not correctly formed. It is termed as teratospermia, right? Asthenospermia. Astheno means it will be decreased sperm motility. Decreased sperm motility. And the last one, that is the necrosospermia. It is increased in the non-viable sperm. Increased in the non-viable sperm. The sperm which is not useful or uh, that is called as the non-viable sperm that is not capable of fertilization. So that is something if the uh, non-capable uh, uh, sperms basically they increase in number it is termed as necrosospermia. Now coming on to the next one that is the semen analysis. How, uh, like what are the parameters that you have to keep in mind while no, uh, doing the semen analysis? See, the semen analysis should be done after an abstinence of 7 or like there is a range that is 2 to 7 days. Initially, we say 3 to 4 days should be there. Like uh, 3 to 4 days, uh, we ask the couple not uh, to restrict, like uh, no intercourse should be there and then the semen is collected. And now, the semen should reach the lab, okay, it is, uh, the semen should reach the lab in approximately one hour, right, it should reach the lab within one hour, right, within one hour or less than one hour, it should reach the lab 
Apart from that, remember the analysis it is done on the liquefied semen. Liquefied semen. Now, the liquefaction time of semen, it is around 30 minutes. It is around 30 minutes, right? Now, coming on to the semen analysis parameter, right? The new values I will be talking about. The semen volume, right? The semen volume in ml, it is now 1.4 ml. Earlier, it was 1.5 ml. So, the normal semen volume should be 1.4 ml as per the new uh, guidelines, the new values. The total sperm number, right? Million per ejaculation, it should be around 39. It is like same as the old value. Apart from that, the total motility in percentage, it should be around 42%, right? Progressive motility, it should be 30%. Non-progressive motility, it should be around 1%. And immotile sperm, remember, it should be 20%. Earlier immotile sperm was around 22% but as of new criteria it is around 20%. Vitality it should be like 54%. Uh, Earlier the vitality was 58% uh, but as of now the new guideline says it is 54% and the normal forms uh, per morphology it is 4%. Right. So these are the semen analysis parameter. Now. Now coming on to the pre-testicular esospermia. We already know we have discussed the hormonal control of spermatogenesis, right? In the previous video, we already know uh, the hypothalamus will uh, act on, will secrete the gonadotropin releasing hormone. It will act on interior pituitary and it will uh, release LH and FSH, right? Now when I say pre-testicular means it is happening not at the level of testis, like the it is occurring uh, above the level of testis, right? So remember, pre-testicular basically means there is defect in there is defect in the hypothalamus or pituitary. Hypothalamus or pituitary. Now you already know, as per our previous knowledge, that the hypothalamus hypothalamus basically releases gonadotropin releasing hormone in a pulsatile manner and this gonadotropin uh, releasing hormone basically acts on the anterior pituitary and anterior pituitary will release LH and FSH, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. Now, this is a problem which is not occurring in testis. It is like the hypothalamus, now hypothalamus and the pituitary is affected. If there is a defect in the pituitary or the hypothalamus, what will happen to the concentrations of LH and FSH? Automatically, they both will be decreased and you already know the LH basically it is um, it helps in the production of testosterone right test LH will act on the uh, latex cells right it will act on the latex cells and these latex cells will produce testosterone right so what will happen to the LH and FSH level yes LH and FSH will be decreased right LH and FSH will be decreased. Now, if LH and FSH is decreased, what will happen? In turn, the testosterone will also decrease. So, what will happen to the testosterone levels? It will also decrease. The testosterone will also decrease, right? Now, so that is something that you have to know. It is not occurring at the level of testis. It is occurring at the level of uh, this hypothalamus and the pituitary. That's why it is called pre-testicular right now there could be various causes over here there could be various causes over here that you have to remember yes the first one it is hypothyroidism hypothyroidism right apart from that remember one syndrome that is called as Kalman syndrome 
right? Kalman syndrome can also result in pre-testicular azospermia, Kalman syndrome, or if there is increased prolactin, if there is increased prolactin, it will again lead to pre-testicular azospermia. Apart from that, if we talk about the management, the management remains the same. The management remains the same like you have to treat the cause. If it is hypothyroidism, you have to treat the hypothyroidism. If it is Kalman syndrome, you have to treat that. If there are increased levels of prolactin, you have to treat that. So over here, to treat the pre-testicular azospermia, you have to treat the cause, right? So that was about the pre-testicular azospermia. Now coming on to the testicular azospermia. So the norm name already suggests that it is occurring at the level of testis. So yes, remember over here the defect. The defect it will be seen in testis, right? The defect it will be seen in the testis. And now over here you already know the LH. LH and repeat last line over here you will see that the LH and FSH levels will be automatically normal because there is no uh, problem in the pituitary or hypothalamus they are working normally now over here remember what will happen to the LH and FSH levels the LH and FSH the levels of LH and FSH will be increased right because production is automatically normal but they are not able to act right so the levels they will be increased but if we talk about testosterone it will be decreased it will be decreased over here and remember the causes the causes over here we have the very first one that is the clean filter syndrome that i will be discussing in detail Clean filter syndrome, right? Or there could be mumps or kitis. Yes, there could be mumps or kitis, which can also lead to testicular azospermia, minors, heat exposure, right? Now, over here, the management. Management is surgical extraction of sperm from testis, okay? It is surgical extraction of sperms from testis, right? Surgical extraction of sperms from testis. Now coming on to the next one, that is the post-testicular azospermia. Now when I say post-testicular, it clearly indicates that there is an obstruction. Sperms are formed but they are not being released because there is some uh, obstruction to the sperm pathway. So remember that there is a defect in, there is a defect in sperm pathway. There is a defect in the sperm pathway. Over here, everything is normal. The LH, the FSH, right? Everything will be normal. The testosterone will be normal. Testosterone again will be normal, right? And the causes over here could be tuberculosis, okay? It could be cystic fibrosis cystic fibrosis or there could be congenital bilateral absence of vast difference. If vast difference is not there then uh, the sperms will not be able to move to the ejaculatory duct, right? So obviously they, it could be one of the reasons where uh, there is an obstruction because the pathway is not present. There could be congenital bilateral absence of absence of vast difference and apart from that management management it is the surgical correction it is the surgical correction 
Now that was about the post testicular, testicular and pre testicular azospermia. Now coming on to the next one that is the clean filter syndrome. Clean filter syndrome. Now you already know the clean filter syndrome, the genotype. The genotype over here will be 47 X X Y, right? The genotype will be 47 X X Y. If we talk about the phenotype, the phenotype, it will be a tall man. You can see over here, it is a tall man, right? It is a tall man as you can see in the picture beta it is having long legs okay the legs will be long the legs will be the long right and apart from that you will see gynecomastia there will be breast development in these uh, males so there will be gynecomastia so if you can see over here there is abnormal breast development and this is called as gynecomastia right it is called as gynecomastia breast will be seen right if we talk about the testis over here the testis it will be small okay the testis will be small and hypoplastic hypoplastic the testis will be small and hypoplastic now remember clean filter syndrome it is the most common cause most common mc means most common cause right most common cause and it is the most common genetic cause of infertility okay it is the most common genetic cause of infertility right over here you will also see hypotonia right you will also see hypotonia means there will be decrease in the muscle tone right there will be decrease in the muscle tone hypotonia basically it means decrease in the muscle tone right you will see feminine manifestations as i have already told you about the gyne uh, gynecomastia okay feminine manifestations okay there will be testicular atrophy okay apart from that over here in clean filter syndrome we already know there will be decreased testosterone right because the uh, testis it is like uh, atrophic testis or small or hypoplastic so there will be decreased testosterone level but you will have increased fsh and lh increased fsh and lh Apart from that, you will also see there are no secondary sexual characteristics. Testosterone will be decreased, right? It will be uh, less in quantity, obviously. So, what will happen that there will be no secondary sexual characteristics. No secondary sexual characteristics, right? Now, these patients, now these patients have increased risk of they have increased risk of remember breast cancer non hodgkins lymphoma okay or there could be any autoimmune disease autoimmune disease so that's why uh, their lifespan right the lifespan it is decreased and even the iq levels are also decreased the iq intelligent quotient level it is like also decreased okay so that was about the clean filter syndrome we have discussed over here about the male infertility the abnormal semen analysis 
pre testicular testicular and post testicular esospermia and apart from that we have discussed about the clin filter syndrome thank you